or a head of department or a head of company doesn't necessarily make you a leader, I think. Um, how many people have been in a place where the, the person with the title was definitely not a leader? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's it. So I want you guys all to think of yourselves as leaders because what you're doing um, is, is doing a great job of bringing people together and trying to make the world a better place and getting into a, you know, a mission that we all believe in, um, in, in our Salesforce world. Um, and Paul's just put a note out there, but in case anyone else has missed it, we've got recording on. So if you don't want your beautiful faces to be on that, you can just turn off your video, but I'd love to see you anyway. <laughs> um, so the first thing I'd love to invite you to do is just to tell me um, how you're showing up today. Um, so we're gonna play rock, paper, scissors. Rock is yeah, um, paper is meh, and scissors is no. Uh, so I just want you to know it's okay to be any of those things. Um, that's one of the great things about the Trailblazer community. So rock, paper, scissors, ready? One, two, three. Nice. Nice. Anybody want to share why they're rock, paper, or scissors? Yeah, go ahead, Servizia. And please tell me how to say your name correctly so that I don't... No, you're fine. You spoke right. Oh, okay. Okay. wow. <laughs> um, so um, I am a, a recent, I'm recently very new to Salesforce. I've got like one year of volunteering experience. Um, and um, today we had uh, the career fair day from Salesforce. And I was a part of it. And it was really, really inspiring. Um, so, yeah. So that's, that's why I am in an upbeat mood. Awesome. Anybody else want to give a shout out about why they're feeling how they're feeling today? Go ahead, Ines. Yeah, for me it was uh, rock because I'm very happy to spend this time with you lot. You cheer my, uh, my days. And um, yeah, and the subject at hand is something really dear to my heart. So I cannot wait to, to see what you're going to unfold for us. <laughs> Thank you. And I wish we had time to go through everybody, but Paul's only given me an hour and I talk a lot. So, <laughs> but to those of you who showed us a, a paper or scissors, I want to say thank you for being true to yourself and letting everybody know uh, how you actually feel. So one of the things in happiness research that we know is that if you are in a safe space of psychological safety and it's okay to say, I'm having a shit day at work, you're actually way more likely to be able to move on and have a better day going forwards. And by the end of the day, you're more likely to be having a good day than if you're kind of doing the grin and bear it and you have to say you're fine when you're not. So thank you so much for, for bringing your whole self to this group. I'm really grateful. So I want you to think about a time when you were happy at work. So it has to be a specific time. Um, and that you felt really happy, what was it that you enjoyed? I'm going to give you one minute just to think about it on, on your own, and then I'm going to throw you into a breakout room with another person, and I want you to share that experience with them. So I'll give you one minute to think, and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do with the breakout room again. Okay, I forgot to actually put on the timer, so hopefully that's been about a minute. So does everybody have a specific event in mind? Yeah, awesome. I'm gonna throw you in a breakout room. You've got two minutes per person, and I want you to tell the other person the story of 
your specific experience of being happy at work. To the person who's listening, I want you to just think about if there's any themes that come out when you're listening to that. And at the two minute mark, I will send a message to the chat rooms and you're swapping. So one person tells the story and then at two minutes swap around and the other person tells their story. Okay. So it's four minutes. If you've got total. any questions, four minutes in total, two Check minutes in. each. Okay. And no, no, good checking. <laughs> um, and if you've got a question, just pop back into the main room and then I can throw you back in the meeting room if you like it. Um, so most important part, person with the biggest shoe size listens to the story first. Okay. And there's one breakout room with three people in it. I'll see you guys all in about four minutes. I'm having to multitask here, <laughs> preparing for the day. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Yeah. I'll just bring in our whole selves to work. Everybody should be here. They're having a good chat. Ten. Nine. Ten. I like that countdown. I've got a little countdown. Oh, it says like breakout seconds. rooms are the best thing in the whole wide world, other than being in real life in person. <laughs> okay, I think everybody's back. That looks like brilliant. Thanks, everybody. That's amazing. Um, so before I ask you what your story was about, can you do me a little favor? Can you put up your hand if it was a time when you were especially well paid? How about, was it a time when communication with your manager was really strong? Yeah? How about a time when you were challenged? Yeah. And what about, was it a time when you were trusted and given freedom to carry out work in your own way? Yeah. And I've um, asked just <laughs> just for the people that might be recording is watching the video. I don't know if that all comes through. So do you want to just summarize that, Sarah? Uh, they, did they they heard us talk about what we were doing? No, no. They, the the actions on the hands. What was the results from your survey? Oh, I'm just about to sum it up. So it really um, so it, what you guys showed is about the same. So we've asked this question around the world and generally nobody says it's about a time when they were especially well paid. So you guys mimic that. It doesn't mean that it's not necessarily there, but that's the general course of things. About a quarter people say um, that it's when communication with their manager was strong. So maybe not quite that high here, but uh, but similar. Half of people say it was a time when they were challenged. Almost 100% of people, and the same that we saw here, say it was when they were given the freedom and trust to carry out a job in their own way. So what I really want to talk about today is when we talk about happiness is that most of the things that we think about and that we know when we try to chase happiness are completely wrong and we're doing it wrong because as humans, we sometimes don't know what's, we know what we should be doing, but we don't do the best things for ourselves or the things that we intuitively think are the right things to do are not there. So I would love it. Is someone happy to share their partner's story that they heard? Did anyone hear a really cool story? Yeah. So I can, I can, I can share that. Um, so um, this is, um, I, I was paired with Tony and um, uh, Tony talked about how at the end of the day, the, um, the organization that she works with, the, the staff members get together and just share what's going on in their lives. And um, um so that you know that you're creating personal relationships it's beautiful and that um yeah me too so um i just felt like um she really picked up on both what i feel that makes me happy with my work but um but also um her own unique experience that's great thank you for sharing trish thank you Tony. Mm -hmm. that's amazing that's given me little little happy goosebumps that's amazing and we don't have time again to do this but what i think you guys would find is if we went through this again you would find that most of the stories had a lot of the same aspects in common so now i'm going to go and try and whiz through the rest of the things ah 
So we're here today to talk about communities because right now, actually, when I talk about happiness at work and I talk about the world that we're living in, communities are actually more important than ever. And something that um, that we found um, scientifically in, in terms of resilience, you know, you've got psychological resilience, emotional resilience, physical resilience, but we also have this fantastic ability to have hum community resilience, which is really as people where we get together and we overcome things together. You know, um, and you always hear these stories about communities pulling together and helping out or dealing with floods and famine and, and war and all these things together. And right now we're facing this unimaginable scenario and we're actually being asked to not have community. We do, we're missing this huge part of how we get through difficult situations. And so what we do as community leaders is actually even more important than it ever has been because we're creating a space, whether it's online or if you're lucky enough to be in a country where you can still be together physically, um, we're creating a space where we can have community resilience where people can come together and support each other. Uh, and I really liked this kind of this description of community resilience, you know, the sustainability of a community to use its available resources, energy, communication, etc, to respond and withstand adverse situations. And, you know, we really, I don't know if anyone else is missing this, but I am for sure missing this in my life. I really miss my, my, my physical community to get through these things in this difficult time together. And as humans, we also have this massive um, potential with positive um, social relationships. And when we do this among employees, it's kind of how work gets done. It's the magic in an organization. You know, if you know what it's like, and I bet a lot of your stories were around a time when maybe you worked really well together as a team. Did lots of people end up having that as part of their stories? <laughs> Nobody's looking at me putting on my hands. Uh, I see a lot of shaking heads. Um, and a lot of the reasons why organizations and teams fail depends on whether they have a good good relationship as the base. Um, and this is my belief and part of what my business is run on is that people make the difference. And my background is historically in customer experience. And actually when you look at customer experience, when you get the highest scores, if you look at the free text in an AI way, it's because a human being did something extraordinary. And that's the difference between an okay experience and, and a great one. So we really are, are creating this environment with our communities where these people that we're bringing together can do amazing things. So happiness at work is important for a number of things. It's, it's really important for yourself. It's really important for teams, for communities, and it's important for, for the wider world. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. So happiness is, um, this is a great example, Sonia Lubomirsky, which is a great name to say. She calls happiness the experience of joy, contentment, or positive well-being combined with a sense that one's life is good, meaningful, and worthwhile. And I think we can apply all of that to a work context or a community context, you know, experiencing those emotions and those feelings um, and having the ability to do things and to progress in what we're doing, achieve things, and that they're meaningful and that we feel that they're worthwhile. And the founder of the partnership that I now run, um, Alex Carroll, uh, who's a Danish um, expert in, in happiness at work, he sums it up as at work, it's a feeling of happiness you get at work. Um, and I bet if you're a community leader like all the rest of us, I get that feeling when I am creating that community event. That's the feeling that I get when, I am, when I've made that community come together for a meeting or for the event that we run. Any of those things gives me that spark um, that I can take with me. So who wants to shout out, how do you feel when you're having a good day at work? What's the impact? Okay, I'll go oh, with this cool. one. When I'm having a good day at work, I'm prepared to do more for people. Oh, excellent. I'm, otherwise, I, when I'm having a bad day at work, then I kind of keep to my job description uh, far more, basically. Yeah energy boost in us. Yeah, you guys can pop it in the chat if you want. You don't have to, to shout it out. Energy boost. Yeah, absolutely. More productive. Yep. Anything else? Pretty similar though, right? You know, we have those feelings. So we did um, a study 
Uh, and these were the top five things around the world. Over 3,000 people surveyed from different countries. Got more energy. You're happier when you get home or when you stay home. Uh, more relaxed, less stressed, more productive, more community. So again, being happy at work for yourself is really important. And how many people think you can be really miserable at work and then go home and feel great? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's really almost impossible to do that. I have uh, met, met one person who um, said that he was autistic and that he was perfectly capable of putting his work into a box and then leaving it there. But other than that, I've never heard someone say that, you know, when you have a bad day at work, you come home. So it, it leaks out in the rest of our lives um, when we are not happy at work. So that's why it's really important for us to be focusing on it in what we're doing. And it's good for you. You know, we spend more of our time at work or on work now these days. <laughs> um, when you look at studies of people in the, in the, uh, who have a long and healthy life, um, people who have a happy work environment or a purposeful work environment that they're working in actually live longer uh, and are more successful. Um, there's not actually a huge amount of scientific evidence that says when you're happy at work that you're healthier. However, there's an enormous amount that says when you're unhappy at work, it has a huge impact on your health. Uh, most scarily, people who are unhappy and stressed at work have higher levels of type 2 diabetes, some types of cancer, and heart disease. So even though I make this a, a bit of a fun joke, being happy at work can actually be a matter of life and death. And if you're not happy and you're, un, and you're highly stressed at work, it can have a massive, massive impact on, uh, on your life. And I know this to be true. The last year I had a very stressful and unhappy time at work. And I actually became very, very ill because of that. And I think we all know with this, you know, stress and burnout kind of epidemic that we're working on here, that focusing on happiness is, is more important than ever. And the last piece of this is it's success. You know, as humans, we have continued to push this boundary of success being what we're aiming for and not happiness. I'll be happy when I get a promotion, I get a pay rise, I get this next job, I do these other things. And unfortunately what we do is we put that up and then we do it again. So as soon as we move the goalpost, then we're not happy with that and we have to move the goalpost again. So we should be happy for ourselves and then the success is actually the outcome of that. It should not be what we're chasing. And I think that happiness at work is the secret and, and creating this happiness at work. I really genuinely believe that what we do in the Salesforce community is, is massively, uh, it kind of encompasses that Salesforce as a, as a company, uh, believes in, in kind of creating a great place to work and it spills out in everything we do. And in my company, we, we sum happiness at work up in doing great work together with great people. And I think that is the trailblazer community in, in a nutshell for me. Um, but if you want to be more successful as an individual, there you go. If you are happy at work or happy in your life, you're more productive, creative, helpful, empathetic, resilient, which right now is kind of the one thing we want. Um, you're more, you're a better team player, open, likable. So all these things that kind of lead us into being, um, better versions of ourselves and more able to create this community. Oh, jump forward. Uh, and then your team or your organization or your community. So you get more productivity, better creativity, higher sales, um, better talent, lower absenteeism, higher profits. Um, there's lots of fantastic studies out there showing that happier workplaces actually make more money. So even if all you cared about was making money um, by focusing on happiness as the goal, you would have that as an outcome. And so a lot of these things, you guys actually said that when you were doing that, you know, higher discretionary effort, Paul, that's exactly it. You're willing to give more. Um, and then you've got some other um, lovely KPIs from uh, the University of Berkeley's Greater Good Science Center. And I do a lot of work with Nick Marks. Uh, he's worked with the UN uh, on the World Happy Planet Index. Um, and it's kind of the ultimate people KPI, isn't it? We don't, we don't ever ask each other in a conversation, are you, um, how engaged are you? How engaged are you today? Nobody says that. You know, what do we want for our partners, for our children, for those we love? We want them to be happy, right? So it's the way that humans naturally talk about positivity. Um, and so if you ask people in your community if they're happy, you have an instant 
good bad signal that you know how to process and you know how to deal with if you ask them kind of any other of a myriad of questions they're kind of open to to differentiation on how you decide to to work with it if someone says they're unhappy with something you know right away what that means uh, and like we talked about, happy companies make more money. And actually a study that we're doing right now is showing that this is true, uh, even in the, in the pandemic, that the companies who have a happier workplace are starting to bound back quicker. And I would expect that it happened in 2008, uh, and I would expect it to happen again. So how do you create happiness at work? Um, do you guys think it's these things? We worked with a client who came up and said that I give them smoothies every day and they're still not happy. Uh, and the problem we have is that companies are really good at giving these things and they feel they should be giving these things. And so lots of places that we work have all of these things in there and their, and their employees are still not happy. Um, those things create satisfaction, not happiness. Um, you end up with hedonic adaptation, which is if you have the first piece of chocolate, tastes really good. By the time you get to the 20th piece of chocolate, it does not taste as good as the first piece of chocolate. Uh, does anyone know how happy a raise makes you? How long it makes you happy for? Want to guess? Trish, I'm loving your face. I really want you to answer this. You can unmute yourselves, you can unmute it's yourself. interactive. I was gonna say five minutes. <laughs> it's even better than that. You get a whole two weeks. Oh, well. <laughs> then it, yeah, then it becomes your normal and you're looking for the next raise, right? So the, these things that we historically chase, just they just don't do it. And then they invite comparison with other people. And we know that comparing ourselves with other people is a terrible idea. We won't go there, but Instagram and Facebook and all the horrible things that makes us feel about ourselves. <laughs> Um, so this is the, the really critical thing, and then I'll race through the rest of it. And the reason this is, is that we actually have two types of happiness. And this is based on Daniel Kahneman's kind of hybrid model of happiness. And the thing that we have is we have um, job satisfaction or evaluated well-being. And that's when we sit down and we think about it. Oh, but I get paid well, and I have got great benefits, and it's a small commute, and and, and, and. So when you objectively think about your happiness... That is what we're talking about. Um, but experienced well-being is, is what we're really going for. And when we talked about that story that you had, so job satisfaction is what we think, happiness at work is what we feel. And the things that help with job satisfaction, those all those things that businesses are doing, perks and salaries and titles and free fruit uh, and free coffee, uh, all of those lovely things. And those have a really big impact on attracting new people to your company. So it helps people make a career choice to move to you. But the things that make us happy at work are the things that in this trailblazer community we actually have and we need to celebrate and focus on and shout them from the rooftops. If you have poor physical health, if you're sick, if you have coronavirus, if you've got cancer, it's going to have an impact on your happiness. If your life situation is not great going through a divorce or you're homeless or anything like that, that obviously has a major impact on it. But other than those things, the two things that really, really critically make you happy at work are results and relationships. So when we talked about that, doing great work together with great people. And I would guess that the majority of your stories that you told each other had one or more aspect of that. And the outcomes that everybody wants from happiness and this idea of satisfaction and employee engagement, whatever we're talking about, that's the outcome that we get and that we hear all the studies from. And that's the reason why we might be trying to get one thing and actually failing. And the impact actually, if what you want is job satisfaction, uh, the impact of being happy at work actually has a, has a big positive impact on, on job satisfaction as well. So you should do that. The only thing you need to be very wary of is if you have those perks and benefits and free coffee and fruit and everything, um, if you take those away, you will make people very unhappy at work. Very unhappy. Anybody had a place where they took away something like coffee, free coffee? Yeah. And who, who talks about that? Years later, people go, well, they used to do this for us. Yeah. <laughs> so 
so <laughs> negative bias. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that, that loss aversion in humans, you know, this is all the kind of science about how our brains work. It has a huge impact. So by all means, put those things in. You should have them. They're a kind of workplace hygiene factor, but only put them in place if you're really sure that you're not going to get rid of them later. <laughs> So I am um, going to wrap up a little bit early on this so we can go have a bit of a play together. But I want you to think about one size doesn't fit all. Right. Um, some people are going to be more results focused. Some people are going to be more relationship focused. OK. And so we know this in lots of other areas. Um, and and we actually um, we believe at my business there's four four pillars and four lenses that I'd love you to take away as you look through what you're doing in your in your community. Um, so we've got results and relationships we've talked about. And the other two we have our purpose. So a purpose is a fantastic North Star. It's often what gets you through a really difficult period of time. And the fourth thing and the thing that across all of my clients and they're big and small and literally across the world that people have been missing and this is something I would really invite you to take away to the communities is play. We've moved work into being almost entirely transactional right now because we have to book time in people's calendars to ask them a question. We're not having the fun interactions that we were having previously um, and, and the reality of the situation is um, people are missing out on fun and fun is just one part of the happiness uh, spectrum. But what it does is when we laugh and we have a little bit of fun, it opens up our the rest of our brains to be more creative, more collaborative, more pro better at problem solving. So without that introductory piece, we, we don't have access to all these other positive emotions um, that are part of the happiness spectrum of positive emotions. Uh, so I'm going to send you over to this lovely Miro board. Anybody use Miro before? Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. And then everyone can have a little bit of a play. If I can open up the chat, it's disappeared. Excellent. That's helpful. Technology fail. There it is. Found it. And I'll get you to think about, uh, you, you want to come and find this view, which is where are you? And I've got those results, relationships, purpose and play. And I'd love you to just take a little shape or a post-it note and draw yourself, score yourself out of 10. Where are you on your daily basis in terms of results, relationships, purpose, and play? And when I talk about results, that's making progress. That's being able to achieve what you want. That is having the autonomy and the resources and the freedom to do that. Relationships are, are how you feel with other people. And then purpose and play. Uh, what button do we press on this mirror board thing? On the board? Hand side, there's a little shape button which looks like a square. And if you click that, you should be able to see a bunch of different shapes. So you yeah. can just click on one of those and then you can come over here and draw it up for yourself. There's a star. Choose a color if you want. And then you guys are all techie, so I would recommend you just copy and paste that shape instead of drawing it multiple times, but it's up to you. You can also just grab this one here, which is a post-it note. I'm not seeing the the results. I'm not seeing the stack of, of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You might want to go down to the bottom um, and zoom out a little bit. There's a button name fits fit the screen. Ah. Yeah, zoom out hugely, I would say. Yeah. I'm on oh, 1%. Yeah. I'm on 1% to get to, to show things. Okay. And you can even use just kind of your mouse to scroll. Sorry, I should have do given I a stop more in depth. <laughs> do I stop the screen recording now, Sarah? Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Sarah.